Hey guys, so in this video we're going to look at um, three different ways of drum compression and how we can use this uh, to adjust the effect the balance of the drums, uh, transients and tails and add punch, reduce punch and things like that. So first of all um, we're, we're going to be working with attack and release mainly um, on a compressor. If you're not sure what these mean, I would recommend going and having a look at our compression uh, post, which is a simple guide for beginners. But attack is basically how long it takes for the compressor to go from no compression uh, to full compression. And release, on the other hand, tells the compressor how long to act on the audio signal um, after it passes the threshold. Um, so it will still compress the signal even if it's gone below the fresh, uh, threshold. And the great thing about these two functions is that they can fix a lot of problems uh, in the mix. You know, if you've got a snare that punches through way too much, uh, then using a fast attack and release will sort that out. And if you've got a percussion hit that isn't punchy enough, um, then a slow attack and release will help it punch through. So we've got the snare here that we're going to use uh, for this video and here's how it sounds without any compression on it. So it's pretty standard uh, from a vengeance pack of course. And we're going to first use a fast attack and release. So turn up the ratio to about 3 just to start with and probably turn the threshold down a bit. Now what we're going to do is turn this attack down uh, quite low. We'll also turn this re the release down to about the same. not sure if you can uh, notice that but with this compression it actually gets rid of the punch and um, causes the tail to come up a lot more um, so it sounds more not consistent but less of a snare sound and more of like a, a noise kind of sample so you lose that punch and we can actually have a look at uh, this if we we duplicate the channel and we'll flatten it and just have a look at the waveform. So you can see here that we've got quite a big difference um, with the waveform. So I'm doing a bit too close. But our compressed uh our compressed snare seems to just carry on longer and it's got less of a, a slope to it. So it's got a lower, um, it doesn't lose volume as fast and it doesn't have as much body to it and obviously no peak. So that's something to note. So basically a fast attack and fast release will reduce the punch and cause your tail the tail of the uh, sample to come out more. Now our next one is fast attack and slow release and with this sample you're not going to notice it much um, but basically a fast attack and slow release evens out the sound uh, so if you have a high peak and a, a low volume tail it will sort of even them out and balance them out. Um, I'm not going to go through that one because it it doesn't really make much of a difference on the snare, but I would recommend um, finding a a solid release time. If you put the release up too much, it won't make a difference. If you put it too low, then it's just going to um, have the same effect as we had before. But fast attack and slow release, um, 
it's going to still clamp down on the signal quickly, but the slow release allows the, the gain reduction to reduce a lot slower, which means the attack and sustain of the drum hit will become a lot more consistent. Um, so it gives you better balance and obviously consistency, and it's, it's very useful if your drums lack uh, body or depth to them. Um, and yeah, that's about it for that one. Now onto our final setting, uh, which is slow attack and slow release. Now this is the exciting one, uh, and it's how we get our punch, which I'm sure all of you are after. So if you have a drum hit that doesn't have much punch or has a little bit of punch, but you want it to have more, uh, this is a setting for you. So making the attack time longer will allow our drum transient to avoid the compressor, uh, sneak past. Not only this, but the longer release time uh, causes the drum's tail to stay compressed throughout. So the transient uh, sounds a lot louder than the rest of the sound, and it has less sustain uh, in general. So when people talk about using compression to add punch, uh, this is usually what they're referring to. So, we're going to adjust the compressor settings here uh, to add some punch. It's something you have to do by ear, obviously, but you can hear that it's got a bit more of a peak uh, when I turn the compressor on. Uh, you've got to be careful with this because it can usually cause clipping, especially if your sound's loud because it does increase the volume of uh, the initial peak. Well, it can, sorry. So, all in all, compression can be a great tool to achieve your, the balance you want, uh, especially with drums. We looked at three different ways that we can affect the sound of a drum hit uh, using the time settings on the compressor, which are our attack and release. One thing to note though is that these settings do have certain side effects, and if we were doing a, a fast attack time on a kick, we could actually lose a lot of the low end, uh, which is something you don't want. Ways to uh, fix this with EQ, um, but generally you want to avoid that. Um, and it all comes down to listening closely to the sound and working out how compression changes it. So next time you want that punchy snare or mellow percussive sound, then you know what to do. Uh, thanks for watching.